Hi, welcome to Sandcastle Snippets once again on South Padre Island with me, Andy Hancock. So how do you make a block formed castle? Okay, well first thing you've got to have is some decent buckets. And we've got some buckets here, a 10 gallon bucket at the base and a 2 gallon bucket at the top. Both with the bases cut out, the bottoms cut out, and full of sand and water. Just always add sand to water and we fill them both up. So let's just pop those off, like that like that okay so now you've ended up with this 150 pound block now we're going to carve the basic shape out of that let's look at some of our tools we've got the big spatula and that's what's going to make the big dents in this thing mechanical pencil duster a homemade window and door tool a straw a paintbrush and a good old trusty friend a normal spatula very important to have that one of these with the end cut off um, to make great stairs and all the details you need so let's get on with it okay so we put the uh, the top part on for a reason we're going to make that into the top part of our castle okay i'm going to come down here i'm going to carve our stairs in this does two things it gives us a lot more room for our baby tower and breaks up that block because the last thing we want our sandcastle to look like is the buckets that it came out of. Okay, so we're going to do that. So let's stand back and have a look at that. We've broken the top shape up and we've extended the top bucket into the bottom. Let me do a bit more and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so you can see we've roughed out the main shape. We've broken down that bucket shape. We've made the top more conical. And then we've put a buttress on the back where we can put brickwork and we've completely broken that shape out. So the next thing we need to do is put the top on the turret. And this is what this little spatula is so cool at. You can just put it on like that. You can put the top of the castle on. You can just trim it all to the height and just get it to look great like that and break it up okay and then smooth out that round tower get it to actually be round again but if you want a square part on it Keep it on there, like a small balcony, if we want to cut a doorway in for the princess, we can just do this and release it from the side of that round tower. We can even leave the frame on the side, oh, bit of, bit of hair in there or some flotsam, okay, so let's just make that work and get this buttress to work, get it to come down like that, okay. So there we are, we've changed the shape altogether. We've already got our stairs in place. Okay, there we go. So here's our stair ramp. That goes down there. Down to another door ramp, and the door is gonna be in here. The door always has to go somewhere. Okay, that's that. More in a minute. This. Hi, we got some more details. If you watch the last video, you'll see how we did an open door. Hi, got returning customers. Oh, here they are. Look, Hello. smile, say hi. Hello. Hello. And we just made a set of French doors, so we're going to carry on. Keep watching. Okay, so here we are, back at our door. Let's make some stairs. This is what this guy is for. You have to go down and in, down, in, down. In. Now, if you're going around the outside of a round tower, you have to aim every step toward the centre of the tower. And that way your stairs will turn properly and the princess won't fall to her death. Very easy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to trim a bit off this and make it a bit of a different shape. Because we want the castle not to look like the bucket it came out of. Okay, and then we're going to do a door here. So remember how we did the door? We cut in, and we cut in 
at an angle to expose the back of the door. Okay, this is the other reason you need the fabulous square because you've got to get that edge square on. All right, so like this, and then take the door off like that, and then you have to put that dark space in behind the door. But the other thing you have to do is put the dark space in behind the frame. All very important. Okay, and then our master tool, the straw. You can see that it's cleaned out that space and given us that dark space. And obviously the deeper you go, the darker the space, the more effective it is at proving that this is an open door frame that's going somewhere. Okay, but there you have it. An open door, some stairs. Now sometimes sculptors make their own tools as I've mentioned before. We've made this out of a bit of uh, metal banding we got from, from Lowe's. Oh, I shouldn't mention the name. But I'm sure you can see that it's pretty cool. Okay? You don't scrape the bottom away. Let's just do a couple of windows like this. When you go in, just try and go in and make them really big and trim the edge. Trim the edge, make sure the outside is slightly bigger than the, the inside. That way you won't break it off as you pull the debris out. Okay? There it is, and just keep going up and down inside. And that way, if you go slightly sideways when you're cutting, it gives the room more dimension. Okay. But also, I broke the number one rule, and that is work from the top to the bottom. So now we've got to clean our stairs and our door. Okay, and then use the spatula to get the window flat, or the room entrance flat. Okay, and that's really important. Okay, and I can see that we've gone through to our other doorway, which is fantastic. So the unexpected bonus of this is that We now have a doorway slightly open, which is very cool. One of the other things you can do with the spatula, being so nice and straight, is to carve beautiful straight bricks. Okay, get those bricks. Make sure you stagger those lines. And if some of it breaks off, we're not worried. You can get those beautiful bricks like that and then just blow them off with a straw. Now one of the one of the little tips you can do is take the bricks around the side, make them look like they're actually part of the sculpture and part of the architecture. Okay? Very important that we actually extend our artwork around either side. Just gives you far more presence and people say wow look at that those bricks even go around the side of the sculpture you know they, they notice the little details especially on castles so you can make this buttress go all the way down to the bottom and you can carve out different lines you can do different shapes or you can actually change why don't you change tack here and go to like a bigger brick an older brick Okay, let's just do the bigger bricks. Okay, let's do the older bricks and get them in there. Because this all helps to give your sculpture some flavor. And the bigger and older the bricks are, shows more foundation. Okay. It shows it took a lot more to build this. So,
change it up, you know, introduce some new flavour. Okay, we've got the door, we've got a hole running through the door there. It's awesome, we've got some stairs, we've got some windows running around. Okay, so let's do something else with the trusty pencil, shall we? Okay, so let's say there's a crack running out of our door here and it's going to run right down here. Let's take the crack and move it up here. Okay, we just introduced that crack. It gives a whole new essence to, to some of the things that are going on. Okay, let's do our little porch tile. Okay, alright, so do that. Oh, one's broken off. Oh, my lordy lordy. Okay, why don't we just extend it upwards? Okay, so there we are. We've broken down that shape. Now one of the things we need is something else on this side. So you can see now that we've got a lot more detail. We've extended the crack all the way from the roof, down through the brickwork, into the doorway, put our buttress on. One other little cool tool we use is a furniture shifter. There it is. And we can use this by doing that. And it smooths all the base out for us. <laughs> so it elevate, gives us different elevations and ways we can finish. And also if you want that nice smooth, clean finish, that's what we can do. Okay. And that's what it does for you. Gives you that clean, elevated finish. And then if you wanted to finish this large one off, you could just break one of the stairs. And run that crank off down there, and then break the side of this frame out. And that would help... <laughs> ...to finish off this side. As well as that, you can also just put a line up the side of the stairs and then just take that sand away oh broke the stairs off no well that's where recovery comes in one of the other things you can do is dust this if you want to soften some of the details soften the stairs you can see now all the edges are gone so if you need to soften the whole thing just Give it a dust like that. And soften it all up. So there you have it. Two bucketfuls, one castle. And we'll see you next time on Sandcastle Snippets.